This is Cheryl McQueen, designer with Del Bella's Designs. I made this bookmark as part of the February exchange that we do monthly and had so much fun with this new stamp set that I decided to do a video tutorial. This fun bookmark includes using watercolor pencils and a technique to remove the ink. Let's look at the supplies we will be using today. I have taken a piece of Multifarious Smooth and Supreme cardstock and cut that to be 6 inches by 2 inches. And then I created a piece to be the background part of our card. And this is just a color cardstock, a 65 pound. This one is cut to 6.5 to 2.5 inches. The stamp set that I'm going to be using today is the new Sweet Poppy stamp set. This one is called Deep Sea. And as you can see, it's got all kinds of wonderful things on it. It's got several fish and starfish and bubbles and all kinds of things. So this is the set that we'll use today. To create the um, look of the seaweed, instead of actually using seaweed today, I wanted something a little more delicate. So I decided to use the Spanish Moss stamps by Lavinia and this is LAV 505. We'll be using two colors of our permanent inks, the Versify Clear Nocturne for our basic stamping and then for the uh, Spanish Moss for our seaweed look we're going to be using Rainforest. For our other inks we're going to be using the Distress inks. We'll be using Bundled Sage, Chip Sapphire, Salty Ocean, Clover, I'm sorry, Lucky Clover, Vintage Photo, and Tea Dye. I'm also going to be using the some of the Tim Holtz watercolor pencils. I'll be using the um, Mustard Seed, Prize Ribbon, Salvage Patina, and Black Soot. If you don't have the uh, watercolor pencils, first of all, I would recommend that you get them. I love these. These are awesome. But um, if you don't have them and want to still do this project, you can use your um, Distress inks uh, to do the coloring as well. We will be using a small paintbrush for painting our fish. I just have a very small one because the details are small on this. And then we'll be using our fan brush. For blending, I'm going to be using a couple of the um, blending brushes and a little small dauber. I will also kind of sparkle up. I don't know if you can see it very well, but I like to sparkle up the bubbles just a little bit there. And with that one, I'm going to be using the Sakura Jelly Roll uh, Glitter Pen. I'll also be using a stamping platform. So I've got my stamping platform here that I have um, a sticky grid on so that I don't have to use the uh, magnets on it. You'll also want to have some water on hand and a paper towel uh, to use as well. Then we will put our, our um, bookmark together. You can either use a running tape or the ultra bound adhesive or any of the other um, glues that you use. I like this one because it has a very fine tip to the end of it. All right, so let's get started working on our project. All right, so let me go ahead and move some of these things out of the way and then we will get our um, stamping platform out. And we're going to start out with uh, blending our inks to, uh, for the background. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and set this aside for the moment. And we'll do a, go ahead and do this just on our surface here. So what I'm going to start out doing is taking my bundled sage, which is kind of a light green. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to do this about three-fourths of the way down. And 
And as I say a lot of times in my video tutorials that I do, I don't worry about making it a solid color. You can if you would like to, but I kind of like it having varying uh, shades of light and dark in my project because to me that gives it just a little more realism. So I'm just going to lightly blend the bundled sage across that top three-fourths of our bookmark. And it's kind of hard, I know, to see because this is a light color on the camera, but there is that. All right. I am going to clean up as we go along just because I don't want to get it all over my card. So I just like to wipe my surface down. So now we're going to take our tea dye, which I've just got a little small one here. And we will take our brush, our blending brush, and do it on the bottom fourth of our card. This is going to kind of give it a little bit of a sand look. I do put a little bit darker amounts down at the bottom and let it kind of fade into the top to where uh, it looks like it kind of goes towards where the water shows. Alright, so now we have got a little bit of the color down for our sand at the bottom of the ocean. Now what I want to do is um, I'm actually going to go ahead and stamp before I go back in and put in my um, salty ocean color. So now I'll grab my stamping platform. And I oftentimes have little extra pieces of paper that I like to put around when I'm stamping things that will go over the edge of my project. So we are going to go ahead and stamp our fish and our starfish now. So we've got the large fish that we're going to be using and the small fish and our small starfish. All right, so I'm going to start out by placing my small fish fairly close to the top here and over to the right-hand side. Take my Versafine Clair Nocturne You got a little fish and stamp him down. A little pressure to make sure that all of the little delicate areas show up. There we go. And then we will move on to our little bit larger fish. So we're going to put her just over here below. what I think of as the baby fish. And this is where this comes in handy so that when I ink her up, then it won't get my sticky grid all messy because I have that little scrap piece of paper down. Ink up the big fish. And 
and then we will take our little starfish and put him down here. Let's see how I want to do that one. Nice thing about this one is he has different angles that you can do depending on how you want it to look. So you can turn him around to get that, that particular look. All right, so I'm going to go with right there. Ink him up. And stamp him in place as well. Now, sometimes um, if you want to keep your, your stamps looking fairly clean, you might want to go ahead and clean them up right away after you've done with your stamping. I just take a little baby wipe and wipe some of that ink off. And obviously, the sooner that you do that, then the more ink you're going to be able to get off of it if you want to keep your stamps fairly clear. Obviously, you're going to have a little bit of staining that happens, but uh, that does not hurt your stamps at all. All right, so now we're going to set these aside. And what we want to do now is go ahead and go back in and put in our Salty Ocean blue color. to give it a little bit of an accent with blues. So I'm just going to take my Salty Ocean and I'm just going to go into some places and kind of give it just a little bit of a touch of blue in there with my bundled sage green color. Okay. And again, I hope that you can see these colors. It's it's uh they're all light colors because I decided that I wanted it to be a little bit more soft of a ocean scene. Until we get to the fish, which we use the darker colors to make that pop. So now that we have all everything stamped, we can go ahead and start working on our uh, fish uh, with the watercolor pencils. I am going to take the Savage Patina first, and this one won't have a whole lot of um, darkness to it, but I just want to get a little bit of shading. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my water bottle and just spritz a little bit here over on the side that I can dip my paintbrush in to pick up a little bit of that water. And then I'm going to just brush that along on my watercolor pencil to just pick up some of that, that uh, color, that pigment. So I'm just going to put a little bit of color, more of a background type color, a little um, soft color before we start doing our stronger colors. just to give it a little bit of that soft, nice little soft look. Put a little bit up here on the baby too. That got a little bit dark. There we go. And again, I'm just kind of barely putting a little bit of water on the brush and then dipping it onto my watercolor pencil. All right. Now I am going to swirl that around and take a paintbrush, I mean a, I'm sorry, a paper towel, and kind of wipe off that color. If you prefer to go and run yours under water uh, to make sure you don't get any blending of the colors, you can do that as well. Or get a little container that you, that you dip some water in. So now we're going to go on to our mustard seed. 
we're going to do the same process. Now, I don't know if you noticed, I wiped, I did wipe up the water that was here because I don't want to blend my colors in um, as much as possible. I want to keep them pure. So we'll do the same process. with our yellows. Got a little bit of a stripe here that we're going to turn yellow as well. Missed that on my little baby one, so let's go back in and put the yellow stripe there. Okay. If you want it darker, then all you need to do is just dab on your watercolor pencil again and go back over it to make the colors a little bit sharper there. So do however however you want to do. Okay. So now let's go ahead and do our let's see. I guess we can go ahead and do the prize ribbon next. So again I'm going to kind of wet my brush, clean it off. wipe up this water and get fresh water for doing our blues. If you want to, you, since we're going to be doing a little bit of shading here, shadowing, you can start out by putting a lighter layer of the color down and then we'll go back later on and darken up for the shadow effects. So right now I'm just going to go and put in that lighter shade of the blue. If you find that you're getting a little bit too dark of a color, just dip your brush in water and not go back to your um, watercolor pencil to add ink. This, this way you can lighten up the color that you've put, in, put down on there. So now we've got that basic layer down. So now we want to go in and do some darker shading. So now I'm going to try and pick up a lot of ink or watercolor. If it gets a little too dark again, just put it in the water. And then I'm just going to kind of blend some of that up. And then try and soften the edges just a little bit with just some regular water on it. And then down just closer to the bottom. Make it even just a little bit darker. So you've got some graduating 
color kind of blending softly together. Highlight around the thin, back thin here a little bit. Again, we can soften it up just a little bit, blend it. And that's by just basically kind of touching the edges of the darker and just pulling down with just only water on the brush and then that helps to to blend it down a little bit. Add just a little more darkness right there at the top. All right. Now what I may do here is speed up the video just a little bit um, so that we're not spending a whole lot of time watching me paint because now I think I've shown you the basic idea on it. So um, I will finish the fish here doing that process. Okay, so now we are ready to go ahead and move on to the green. I do not, in this particular set, I, they don't have the Lucky Clover. And this is the color that I decided that I wanted to do. So this will kind of show you how you can use the inks if you don't have the watercolor pencils. So again, I'm going to clean my brush off. This time I'm going to go ahead and spritz it since I had a darker color. Make sure my surface is cleaned off. That a little too close. Let's do our water over here. All right, and so what I will do is I'm going to take the same process where I dip my brush in the water, and then I'm just going to get a little bit of ink off of my ink pad. And do the same process that we did with the blue, where we're going to put the lighter shade down. And then we will go back in and do our darker color on both of the, of the fish like we did with the blue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the tea dye. By, to do that, I'm going to take the water again and spritz it down. This is clean water and a clean brush. And then I'm probably just going to take a small little piece of paper towel. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put the water over the top of my starfish. And then I'm going to blot him. Now this will only work if you use the regular, or it will work better I should say, if you use the regular Distress ink and not the Oxide because the oxide has some pigment in it. So when you put water on it, the pigment has already stayed on the card. Um, and so you, you won't get as much removal. Whereas with the Distress ink, you'll actually get it to remove the ink, leaving more of your white background. You can do it with your oxides as far as lightening it, but you won't get it back down to your white paper background. All right, um, see if you can kind of see how now the with the ink being removed, my starfish has more of a, a white coloring to it. So 
so now I think what I want to do, because they they still look a little bit flat to me. So I don't know if you can kind of see that on the example, I've put just a little bit of shadowing around the starfish and the fish to kind of give a little bit more depth. And to do that, we will take our, let's see, black soot, spritz our water down again. And this time you really, really want to make it as soft and line as you can. So you might even take a, like a piece of paper, another piece of paper, and see if it, you're getting it pretty light. And if not, dab it in your water. Because you really just want to kind of give a little hint of that shadowing. You don't want it to be a real dark, dark color. It just needs to be enough to get the hint that this is not a flat item. It's a, it's a, a dimensional. So, get a little more water, no more ink. So I hope you can see this. I'll try and lift it up here in just a moment. Hopefully you can kind of see as I'm doing it. Sometimes when you have these lighter colors, it just doesn't pick up as well on the video, but hopefully. So now I've got a little bit around my starfish. And now we're going to go ahead and go and put a little bit around our swimming fish. And again, this is just very, very light. Just to kind of give a little bit more three-dimensionality to it. Oops. And so you see with that one, I didn't get quite enough water, but hopefully I can blend that out. And then we'll do the same thing with our little, whoops, with our little baby. Just a tiny little bit. To give that illusion of depth. All right, looks like I may have gotten, I don't know if I can get that to remove. Let's try it. I got a tiny little dot there of ink. Maybe if nothing else, I can just lighten it up. And we'll actually use it kind of as our, our little texturing. So... I don't know, you can. You probably really can't see it until you look at the picture at the end of this video or on the, um, uh, uh, just on the still picture. But this has just some teeny tiny little dots just to give it a little bit more of a sand feel. So this is where I've taken my fan brush. Sprayed some water down. Got the ends of it wet. And then I am just basically going to just dab it lightly into my vintage photo. And then very, very lightly. Just kind of put some little dots that give the effect of a little bit of graininess. And we don't want them very dark. And we don't want to put a whole lot in there. Just enough to kind of give the idea that we've got a little bit of grainy texture there. Okay. 
So now we are just about done to a point where all we need to do is our bubbles and our Spanish moss. So I'm going to pull out my stamping platform. And let me get the bubbles. They have several different types of bubbles on this one this particular set. I am going to go ahead and do that set for the bigger fish. Quickly ink that up. And then we will do the one that's a little bit smaller. It's got a few more bubbles in it for our small fish. And then we will take our Spanish moss. I'm going to take the skinnier piece right now. Move this background around here. And then I'm going to have this little piece just kind of come up beside the starfish. And with that, we're going to go ahead and use our rainforest. The Verse Fine Claire. And then I think I will do just a little tiny one. Kind of coming up a little bit across the edge of one of the arms of the starfish. That just gives it a little more depth again. And then I'm going to go ahead and move on to the bigger Spanish moss for the other side. And that one we'll go ahead and kind of have come up a little bit over the fish. Again, adding a little bit of depth. Ink up the stamp. Now we are just almost finished. Don't need our stamping platform anymore. We'll set that aside. I'm going to go ahead and make sure I don't have any more water on my surface here. All right. Now what I like to do, I have a couple of finishing touches that I like to do. The first one is I like to put just a tiny little bit of a border around the edge. It just kind of, um, to me, finishes it off and also um, draws the eye to the center. So what I'm going to do is to take a little bit of this chip sapphire and just very lightly rub just on the edge of the card to get a little bit of a frame. And you can do this with any color that you like. I like the chip sapphire 
it's not quite as dark as the black soot is, but it uh, but it still has a little bit of a darkness to kind of give that good frame. All right, so there's our little frame, and then the last step before we put it together is I'm just going to take my glitter pen and just kind of go around my bubbles just to give them a little bit of a sparkle. You can either color them in or just go around the outside edges. I don't know if you can see the glitter. And now we're just ready to put it together. So I'm going to go ahead and up. Oh, looky what I did. I've got my cardstock all wet. So if you'll hold on a second, I'm going to cut another piece real fast. All right. Sorry about that. Now that happens, I guess, when you have using water. So accidents will happen. So now all I'm going to do is take my running tape, or you can use the Ultra Bond, and I'm just going to adhere this to my color cardstock. Now, I also noticed that I have got a little bit of ink on my fingers. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can find a clean spot on my baby wipe because I sure don't want to get my card all messed up. Wipe those fingers off. adhere that down. Now, if you want to, you don't have to. Sometimes I like to take my little fancy corner punches, add a little bit more interest. And there we go. There is our cute little finished bookmark. Thank you so much for watching my video tutorial today. I hope you fun, have fun trying out the new Sweet Poppy stamp called Deep Sea. Remember to check out the DelBellsDesigns.com website for more tutorials on the Design Team page. Have a great day!